Hi, Matt. Hey, how are you guys? Do I have to answer now? <laughs> you can answer after me. Okay, good. <laughs> I'll know that anyway. <laughs> How's things going for you? I know good. Good. How about for you guys? Well, I don't know. We're going to find out. You're going to find out today, huh? Yeah. Well, my guess is that we have the same discussion we had every year, and then they approve it. All right, welcome. It's the. <laughs> welcome. It's twenty or the ninth day of April, two thousand twenty-four. This will be the meeting of the Uinta County Commission at three o'clock. It's actually three o one, and it is being held in the boardroom of the Uinta County Commission. Our first will be the. Prayer followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Deanna Nyberg will be as give us the prayer, and Barbara Semper will give us the pledge. Our dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful to be meeting today as residents and as public servants of you in county, and we ask thee to. Bless us as we conduct this meeting, that we will conduct ourselves in a manner that's pleasing unto thee. And we're grateful for the area that we live in, and we ask thee to continue to bless this community with prosperity. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Thank you. All right. Mr. Will, oh, I'm sorry, approval of the minutes from the March 25th, 24 work session and March 25th, 2024 meeting. Okay. I would, I have reviewed those and I would make a motion that we approve the minutes as stated. I'll second and call for a vote. Aye. Aye. Passed unanimously. Mr. Wilkins. Commissioner's warrants from two weeks. We got March 28th, 2024, in the amount of 
$338,795.57. That check run did have an annual payment that we make to Northeast Counseling for $184,549. Also, the next check run, April 3rd of 2024, in the amount of $296,173.93. Only one on that was actually out of ordinary as there was an annual fee paid to Bamboo for one year subscription for the HR program, 39583 Everything else is pretty much just normal bills. Okay, thank you. We do a no, counter signature of certified. No claims this claim. week. We'll have next week. The other one you're thinking of, I'm sure. Oh, I thought it, it's in this week's check run. Oh, okay. I thought they were doing okay. All righty, tax matters. I do have one tax com matter, commissioners. Serial number 17052002. This was a state appeal on a Greenbelt uh, rollback tax for 2022 and then 2023. The state, he, he went all the way to a formal appeal and he won at the formal appeal. So we need to refund back for 2022 three thousand six hundred and seventy two dollars and ninety cents and twenty twenty three seven hundred ninety five dollars and thirty seven cents for a total of four thousand four hundred sixty eight dollars and twenty seven cents okay Do we have a motion um i make a motion that we approve uh that tax as re rollback rebate as stated refund it's a refund refund, refund. Thank you. That refund is stated by Mike Wilkins. I'll second. Call for a vote. Aye. Aye. Passed unanimously. All right, Ms. Nipper. Hello. I have two items this morning or this afternoon. The first one is an abatement of taxes in the amount of $13,751.08 on tax year 2024 for business personal property account 5257 in tax district number 24. And these are on the eight motor graders that Uinta County leases, and so they are exempt. Okay. Do you have a motion on that? Um, I would make a motion that we approve what did you call that? Abatement. 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 <laughs> abatement. The abatement, as stated by Barbara Simper. No second. Vote. Aye. Aye. Approved. Okay. Next. The other item I have is to add escape property taxes uh, for 2022, $112.46, and for 2023, $776.22 <laughs> <laughs> on serial number. 06028-0090, and uh, the reason for the escape property tax is this, pur this property was purchased from CITLA, and we failed to have notification, and so we made the parcel, and so it's a few days in um, the 22 tax year and then all of 23. Okay, go for a vote. Okay. Um, I would make a motion that we approve that a, a escaped, <laughs> escaped, <laughs> escaped property tax. Yes. I've got to get my verbiage right here. Okay, I would make a motion that we approve that escape tax as presented by Barbara Simper. And I'll second that. Go for a vote. Aye. Aye. Approved. Thank you. Okay. Proclamation for me. Okay. Our attorney's not here yet, so we can't. No, we we're supposed to call him. Oh, we're calling him? Yes. Oh, I don't have my phone with me, though. Do you have Eric's number? Eric Johnson's? Sorry. I'm sorry. Carol, I put him. Well, we're doing that if you guys. If, sorry, you guys have the little form. <laughs> Commissioners, if you want to do all of the, the recessing. Recessing all of Okay. Um, and I think I can probably answer a lot of the questions, but you're welcome to call him. I don't want to stop that part. Yeah, he just said he would be available and could answer any questions during this. Okay. 
Does it have a motion? Um, I make a motion that we reset, recess for the municipal building authority. And I'll second uh, that, and that'll take the chair out of mine if you vote to approve it. Um, okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. It's all yours, Chair. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm the chairman of the Municipal Building Authority, so we're now in the Municipal Building Authority. And we are going to open it this as a public hearing, approving the adoption by the Municipal Building Authority of Uinta County, Utah, of a perimeters resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of not more than $620,000 taxable lease revenue bonds series 2024 B for a compactor and related matters if anyone would like to speak to that did you want to go first? I can give a little more explanation if you want and hey. then uh, I Eric think we just have the in. public hearing so just a public hearing what this is for the public and then they have questions that's I'm fine <clears throat> we'll try to do our best to answer them we went before the CIB board to receive six hundred twenty thousand up to six hundred twenty thousand dollars. It's a fifty-fifty match on a landfill compactor to replace the compactor that out there that is currently there. This is a zero percent interest loan for, I believe it was ten years. Eric, is it ten years? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. So it's a ten-year zero percent interest loan. Uh, the landfill will be making the payments for this. Uh, annual payment to the MBA and then the MBA will make the payment to the CIB board out of the landfill revenues so with that now do you mind telling do you know how old the grader was the compactor I mean, there's compactor. there now it's yes. 20 plus years I remember when it came many many years ago okay yeah it's it's well over 20 years old okay thank you um, but this is a public hearing, so if anybody would like to make any comments, please come to the podium and state your name for the record and your comments. Mm, okay. Hearing no comments, then we will close the public hearing. And we will move to item number seven, which is the resolution number 04-09-2024 MBA 1. This is a resolution that will approve the execution by said authority of an annually renewable lease agreement with Uinta County, Utah for a compactor authorizing the issuance and sale by said authority of its taxable lease revenue bonds series 2024B in the amount of $517,000 authorizing the execution by the authority of a master resolution and the security documents and other and related matters. Chair, I'd make a motion to accept that resolution. Okay, and I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That was unanimous, so thank you. That resolution passes. Um, thank you, Eric. I would I'd, accept thank the you. motion. I would make an uh, motion to adjourn MBA and reconvene the regular commission meeting. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. That was unanimous. All right. Number nine will be resolution 0409 r one a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Uinta County, Utah, authorizing the Municipal Building Authority of Uinta County, Utah to issue and sell $517,000 taxable lease revenue bonds, series 2024B, for a compactor and authorizing an annual renewable lease and the execution of all related documents and related matters. I would so move. I will second. Call for vote. Aye. Aye. Okay. Next will be a resolution for, I'm sorry, 0409 2 Encouraging Uinta County residents to remove junk, debris, and solid waste from yards and establishing a spring cleanup week for 2024, April 20th through the 27th. Mr. Sturmer, do you have that resolution? Yes, Mr. Chair, I can take that. Greg was here last commission meeting and presented on this, so um, I don't think we really need to have any 
discussion, additional discussion because it's pretty straightforward, something we do every year. Uh, but we do have the draft resolution. It has been emailed to Greg. Greg reviewed it, emailed Harley back and said he's, he's good with it. Um, it just sets forth the, the dates of April 20th to April 27th, 2024, and the waiver of the fees for small pickup and trailer loads, the pickup and trailer loads, and um, dump trucks to incentivize and encourage county residents to clean up residential areas and public lands. But the, the commercial trash and everything like that, it's, it's not waived. This is for residential cleanup purposes. Okay. So it's here for your Okay. And again, it's April 20th through the 27th. Yes. And if you don't mind, Chair, um, there's a couple other points to this. And it will be advertised in the paper, so hopefully you'll see that, and it gives a little bit more information. But they, there will still be a $20 charge if you bring refrigerators or anything with Freon in it, because there is a cost for us to take those items and deal with the Freon. So that will not be waived. Or, and also, they're only going to allow four tires per load. There's a fee so, for that. Well, he said there's not a fee for that, but it's, there's four, only four tires allowed per load. But that will be in the, the ad advertising and that about this. But other than that, clean up your yards and get all your stuff hauled to the dump. It's Greg's favorite week. So <laughs> it is. Let's have that be in the ad as well. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Might be the final hurrah for that can of compactor, too. Yes. All right, do I have a motion? Yes. So I would make a mo motion to approve resolution 0409 2024 R2. And I would second that and call for a vote. Aye. Aye. Okay, next one is National Telecommunications Week proclamation for April 14th through the 20th. This is a matter that's very dear to my heart because when you dial 911 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that person that picks up the phone is the telecommunicator. One of the things that most people don't realize is the dispatch center handles for three counties and all the federal agencies after hours. So they have a total of about 48 telephone lines to handle and even more radio channels. So when you call them up and you might think they're being short with you, they might have an emergency going on in another county that we don't know anything about. So I very strongly support this, and I would think that uh, it would be really nice if anybody would like to send something to them, a bunch of flowers or something, send them by way of the Highway Patrol Office over in the Public Safety Building. And Mr. Sturmer, I believe you have the the information on that. I do. It's 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 pretty short, um, and not one that we have done regularly. So I'll just I'll just read it just so people know it's in the proclamation. Is your thing on your microphone? Yep. But okay. I'll do that. That's okay. And I'll do this. <laughs> Thank and you. And now I'm on the radio. <laughs> okay, so it says Proclamation National Public Safety Com Telecommunicators Week, April 14th through the 20th, 2024. Whereas emergencies that require law enforcement officers, fire, or emergency medical services can occur at any time. And whereas when the when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of law enforcement officers, firefighters, and emergency medical personnel as critical to the protection of life and preservation of property. And whereas the safety of our law enforcement officers, firefighters, and emergency medical personnel is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who contact the Uinta Basin Consolidated Dispatch Center. And whereas public safety communicators are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services. And whereas public safety telecommunicators are the single vital link for law enforcement officers, firefighters, and emergency medical personnel by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them information, and ensuring their safety. And whereas public safety telecommunications of the Uinta Basin Consolidated Dispatch Center have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, sus suppression of fires, and treatment of patients. And whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during their performance of their job in the past year, therefore, uh, be it resolved that the Uinta County Commission declare the week of April 14th through the 20th, 2024, to be National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in Uinta County in honor of the women and men whose diligence and professionalism keep our county and citizens safe. And then today's date and commission signature. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
Next is requesting a fee waiver at the conference center for the gun and knife show. Bill? It didn't get adopted. Oh. So we need a motion. Just we to have to. Oh, I'm sorry. Just to adopt a proclamation. Okay. I would make that motion. You're next. And I'd second that. Call for a vote. Aye. Aye. Approved. Okay. Yeah. Did I miss one? Yeah, the rodeo. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want to switch? Bill, them? go ahead. <laughs> Got you up here. We're going to keep you. Okay. My name is Bill Lewis. I, along with two other individuals, constitute the Friends of Buckskin Hills. Our reason for existence is to raise funds for our local uh, shooting area, the Buckskin Hill Shooting Range. The idea is to make it a safer and a more impressive as well as a more utilitarian facility uh, owned by the county. We would come before you at this, at this time to ask that the fee for the convention center be waived based upon the idea that, and the basis that all the profits raised, other than expenses of course, what we end up spending, are donated to Buckskin Hills for those functions that we talked about. Uh, do you have questions that I can answer? Before I go into that, Carney was supposed to be here to present this, and he had a whole bunch of information, and his wife locked herself out of the house with frozen goods, and so Carney is not here. Instead, I am here, and I have <laughs> very little information beyond what I've given you, but I'll do I think, my best. I think one of the things that you need to uh, enlighten us is how much... Uh, I shouldn't say how much. How many people, on an average, do we have come from out of the area just to utilize our range? A, a rough estimate is about 60% uh, of uh, the people that are dealers come from outside the area. So they bring in funds for rooms and board and food and beverages and that type of stuff. Uh, the other 40% are uh, local individuals, some of whom are our sponsors also. Okay. And I'm going to scare you because I, I'm going by memory. I believe that the rent is about $1,300. For the if, comfort if, center? If they rented it for the comfort center, we'd be waving about that much. Yes. I thought it was 1850 It could be. Somewhere between eighteen and Okay. 13. I can't remember. That's why I said I was counting on my memory. I did have a question. Did you? No, go, go ahead. ahead. Did, did you get a chance to talk with Leisha with Travel and Tourism about we the did, formula? We, or I anything? thought that that was going to be carried out by someone else, which is why I'm here unprepared today. Oh, okay. Um, so being on the agenda, we thought we'd better take be advantage here. of it. Okay. Because I just, I thought you were going to visit with her before for hopefully before this happened, before it came on our agenda to see. Um, Leisha and Travel and Tourism, just for everyone else, and when we have um, these good things that come to our community and want to do good things in our community, ask us to donate or to waive a uh, sponsor, I guess, and wa or waive fees. Um, Leisha's office with Travel and Tourism has a formula that they use to calculate how much the county can donate to that I don't know what you call it sponsor, sponsor. I should say sponsor to that cause um, and uh, there are so many in this community that do that and do so many good things for this community that was what they came up with before I believe I was in office John and I were put in office so it is something that was they thought was fair to everyone that would come before the Commission and ask for these things just to explain and um, that's our way of trying to help. We have a fund that I believe it has $60,000 in it for each year in our budget to use for those things, for those different causes and people that um, would like us to participate. So I'm sorry. That's what I was referring to, though. And I didn't know if you'd had a chance to do that. Would you Apparently mind not. if we table this and oh, come visit? Commissioners, can I jump in real quick? So this one, in, in my opinion, is, is different than the ones that we're talking about under that scenario. Under that scenario, we're dealing with outside groups who are doing benefits in the out, outside in our community and asking the county if they would like to contribute to their private event, their private cause or whatever. This is a group 
who is coming and using our facility to then raise money to be used in our facility, which is different than other charitable organizations that Thank are you. taking that money to then use it for their charitable organization. So we've, we've drawn that, that distinction, distinction because here all the funds, except like, like was mentioned when there's those actual costs, when if you're you know, paying for banners or something like that to promote the event, but all the other funds are going directly back into the Buckskin Hill shooting complex. Okay. So we, we have distinguished this request from other requests because they're not asking for a, a cash sponsor. They're asking because the funds are being raised to the benefit of a Uinta County facility, can, can we just waive that fee? Um, that's what if the county wants to change that direction, that's, that's fine. I just wanted to clarify. draw that distinction between what this request has historically been and what the other requests, like the one we just had a couple weeks ago, fine. which was very good organization, but they're trying to raise money for their own kind of like private charitable organization and asking the county to be a, 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 sponsor. a, a sponsor or to donate to it. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Lewis had asked that and he had stated that to me when we talked and I just, I'm glad you gave us that great, clarification. Yeah, great, great question, but that's, that's how I see the, these requests being, okay. being different. Um, I don't know if our auditor has any, any, any independent question on it, but that, that's where I see it because the funds are coming directly into the UN County facility. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Well then. Based on that information. Yeah, based on that, I guess I would say I would make a motion to approve the fee waiver for the gun and knife show. For 2024. 2024. No, we. Five. I was gonna say we just had it. Yeah, so 2025. Yes. Okay. I'll second that. And call for a vote. Aye. Aye. There you go, sir. <laughs> That's simple. Thank yeah, but you. I hope that they are getting with you to start working on a plan for I will, the gun rights. Uh, I will have a plan uh, prepared that I would like to present to the commission, okay. and it will be a, a near future. Okay. I will arrange to... To get well, yeah, I think visit with the them and, and yeah. go through them before it comes to us. Okay. Everybody get on right. the same page. Okay. Right. And I believe we were wanting to involve the user groups out there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes to correct. come up with a couple optional comprehensive plans for the gun range. Thank so. you. Okay. Advise Carney to be here next week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll question him then. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. I apologize, but Vernal Roundup Rodeo. Certainly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, commissioners, my name is Carson Young. I currently serve as uh, vice president uh, for Vernal's Dinosaur Roundup Rodeo. I sincerely appreciate the opportunity to present to you today. Um, and thank you uh, and your employees um, mm -hmm. at Western Park, the Conference Center, um, the law enforcement, and uh, all others that help uh, with our event. Uh, this year's event will be held June 13th through the 15th on Father's Day weekend. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more um, the reasoning behind that change uh, shortly. I did want to point out a few highlights. Um, and also just to back up a little bit, this is a request for sponsorship. Um, Mike and I were confirming the amounts. Um, last year we requested $25,000. Um, so in 2023 we had 669 professional contestants uh, enter our rodeo. Um, we had spectators attend from 36 different states that we have record of um, and that's actual ticket purchases. This does not account for, um, for example, my friend, his parents live here in Vernal. He's a resident of Montana, but his mom bought the tickets and they came. Um, so we have record of at least 36 different states from the spectators. We were 500 seats away from selling out Thursday night, uh, which was a record um, to my knowledge. And Friday and Saturday night we sold out. Um, Friday for the second consecutive year and Saturday for the fourth time in five years. 
the one anomaly being 2020. Carson? Yes. Quick question. Do you know yes. how many seats you sell? So um, it, Western Park has a capacity of 4,750. Okay. Um, we chose not to do standing room only to um, make sure the event was um, a better experience for our spectators, security, law enforcement. Um, so that was a choice we made last year. Thank you. Um, here's a quick map of everywhere that we sold. Um, we have a record of selling tickets from. Um, so we're getting, you know, as far away as Hawaii and Connecticut of people attending our rodeo. Um, with, you know, because of our, our success and some of the grant monies we've received, we've been able to give back to the community. Uh, Uinta County Search and Rescue, uh, Basin Junior Rodeo, uh, and Vernal Community Holiday, Holidays. Um, this also does not include our fiscal year end September 30th. Uh, we were able to help with the county um, through some private donors that we had. Um, to secure additional panels and livestock equipment uh, to support the junior livestock show and our event um, that will remain property of the county. Um, and that was just over $30,000. Um, that'll be on next year's report. A few highlights for 2024. Uh, we'll have um, nine-time NFR barrel man and comedy act of the year, John Harrison, again. Uh, our bullfighters will be Dusty Tuckness and Nathan Harp, uh, who between them have 17 NFR qualifications and Dusty's been the bullfighter of the year 10 times and then Friday and Saturday night we'll have uh, Charlie Jenkins in concert so we have the best of the best in rodeo entertainment coming um, because of that we'll be broadcast live on the Cowboy Channel and the Cowboy Channel Plus app uh, we will once again be a part of the PRCA playoff series uh, which is the top um, 60 rodeos uh, in the country um, so with that this kind of plays a little bit into the date change up here. I have a table um, that lists every single playoff series rodeo um, this year and showing the amount of payout um, to the contestants. And so the payout is combined between the added money um, that the committee puts in and the contestant entry fees. And so kind of the minimum threshold now um, for 2024 that they've stated is um, the rodeo has to pay out $200,000. Um, and so pretty much all of these rodeos that were less than $200,000 last year, they're upping their purse money uh, to make sure they stay as a playoff series event. And to kind of go back to the date change, all of these rodeos in blue in the center uh, would be rodeos we would be competing with um, this year in July. Um, so we always compete against Calgary, uh, which is the second largest rodeo um, during the regular season. Um, Colorado Springs uh, is an invitational um, playoff series event that pays out over 600,000. Uh, we also conflict with Casper and Sheridan, Wyoming. And there is becoming a shortage of uh, rodeo athletes. And so um, this is kind of what's contributing to more and more cities and communities upping their prize money. And you know, in the short run, we did not feel we could keep up with Colorado Springs, Sheridan, and Casper. And so for the past um, three to five years, we've been evaluating a date change. And so this is why we have moved to June, um, and it will be Father's Day weekend um, this year and going forward. Um, on this graph, um, the yellow rodeos are the Utah rodeos, um, which every year it seems like they're adding more and more purse money. Um, and then down here in green are rodeos that would be our same weekend, um, but they're smaller, they're not playoff series events, which would also pull contestants from our rodeo. Um, so with that, um, that concludes my presentation. I'll open the floor to any questions from the public or the commissioners. Do you mind going back to that previous slide? Yes. Okay, so the ones by Vernal are the ones that we compete with in June. Yes, okay. um, but they are not the same weekend as us. Um, so Sisters Oregon is two weeks before us. Woodward, Oklahoma is one week before us. Um, Reno is the week after us, starts the week after us. Prineville, Oregon's the week after us. And then Greeley and Pecos, Texas are kind of that last week of June that bleeds into July. So we will be the only playoff series event in June uh, on our weekend.
Now, I've heard rumor, and of course rumor is not any more than what it's worth, that this was the last year we could get the announcer and the rodeo stock to sign a contract pending the change of date. Um, that, that's not correct. Okay, so we have the same rodeo announcer. Um, he's under contract with us for two more years. Um, and then we'll, we'll see where that goes. Um, so the announcer we've had, we've had him for, this will be his 19th year here, Roger Mooney. Mm -hmm. um, and he's announced the NFR seven times. Uh, our stock contractor, Powder River Rodeo, we are under contract with them for two more years. Um, and neither of us have intent to change. And so, you know, if, if there does warrant a change, we will explore it at that point. But at this time, we're, we're not intent on changing. So everybody who's here in that rodeo just heard it from the horse's mouth. It's not changing for at least two more years yep. for sure. Uh, yep. Thank you. And it Appreciate doesn't, that. they don't have an express a concern with change in date? No, with our, our stock contractor, they did have con some concerns because they do um, like a an, in an invitational only bareback and saddle bronc event in Fallon, Nevada. Um, but we'll work with them to secure subcontractors so that we still have the same quality stock at our event. Um, we did lose one contract personnel. Um, her name was Jill Franz and Loden. She was our sound director. Um, she had a prior commitment um, and that she wasn't willing to break. So we've hired a new sound director. Um, but um, we're, we're excited about where we're going from here. And hopefully we have new sound over there. Yes, we Wait. have hired a separate sound contractor to bring in speakers. Uh, we'll have uh, backup power available, and we have a new music director who also has his own set of speakers in the event something happens. Oh. Uh, but we have, we confidently feel we've addressed that issue. Well, I meant with the improvements oh, and yes, updates with the improvements. we've done over <laughs> at Western Park, sorry. I was just meaning that we have been updating and running fiber and running more conduit yeah. to the arena to help facilitate upgrades and updates to those those things so great okay Thank I you. do not have any other questions I don't okay um, and and so generally we've uh, as part of this presentation we request uh, the Commission's approval uh, for our sponsorship funds um, last year was $25,000 Um, I now we call on our man. Did we budget that this year? Yes, that we, amount. We budget Thank that you. every year. <laughs> Thanks. I would make a motion we approve the twenty-five thousand dollar sponsorship of the Vernal Dinos, Vernal's Dinosaur Roundup Rodeo for twenty twenty-four. Then I'll second that and call for a vote. Aye. Aye. Thank right. you. Thank you, Carson. See if I can get this right this time. I'll just get up here before you. If you would get up there, Travis, that'll help me a lot. 2024 Rise and Thrive Business Speed Pitch Competition Report. Okay, so I made a presentation before I looked at the agenda, so I'm going to shorten a lot of my presentation <laughs> to save some time. Like to go out at five. <laughs> Well, good afternoon, Commissioners. Travis Campbell with Uinta County Economic Development. And I am here to report on the 2024 Rise and Thrive Pitch Competition, which was our fourth annual event. Um, this, this event, uh, it provides new business concepts and businesses whose doors have been open for less than one year to compete for funding in a prize package of various resources. The intent here is to assist these entrepreneurs and new small businesses um, to really get their feet under them and to, to have the tools to be successful as they, they start their new business. Um, understanding that, the, that a healthy small business environment is crucial for, for overall economic health and economic growth. Um, this event is put together to assist these businesses with various advisory sessions, uh, meetings with experts, different tools, um, support from local sponsors, and of course the the prize money that we offer to to our winners. Um, but again, I'm going to skip through a lot of this. I was going to give you some some of the history, but um, all of this funding, I will note, all of this funding comes through the 
governor's office of economic opportunities annual rural county grant that uni county um, applies for this this year we had eight different programs that were uh, were recommended by our community advisory board and then approved and subsequently approved by the commission and then subsequently approved by the, the governor's office. Uh, so that's how this event is funded each year. Um, lots, of, lots of organization and a lot of planning goes into this. So I'll give Sydney Millet with the Innovation Hub, the manager of the, the hub, a lot of thanks for the, the help putting this, this year's event together. Um, it does take quite a lot, not, not only in organizing, but um, in preparation from our competitors too. So. Um, I'll skip through most of this again just to save a little bit of time um, and get to our winners. So we, we do a top three in the final round um, and then a People's Choice winner. The People's Choice is sponsored by the, the Chamber of Commerce, so that prize package includes a one-year membership, some cash, and various other um, items from local businesses that are donated. And the People's Choice winner is, is chosen during the final round of the competition by the public that's there. Um, this year we had about 160, probably 170 individuals who attended. So if you haven't attended, I recommend coming next year. It's a great event, lots of fun, lots of excitement. Um, and it's cool to see these new business ideas and, and hear from them. So this year's People's Choice winner was um, Amber and Britton Jackson with their company Squeaky Soap. And um, even though these two are kids, they did an amazing job during their pitch, probably just as good of a pitch as anybody else did, and were able to answer all the judges' questions flawlessly. Um, they make their fun and unique soaps themselves. This is their business, not their parents. And they target this to a kid's market. So they've got a variety of colors and shapes and designs, and some soaps that even have toys inside of them. So um, the People's Choice Award, again, it's voted by the public who's there that night and these two were a shoe-in to win that. So um, they were our People's Choice winner. Our third place winner was Amanda Jenkins with her new business, Vernal Vineyard. And I was really excited about this one. I think this is a great idea. Um, and I think there's a, a lot of opportunity for growth with this kind of business, uh, it's something we don't really have here in, in Uinta County. Um, and what a successful vineyard could mean, um, not only for the residents here, but for those visiting the county. I think the, the sky's the limit here. So Amanda started nursing the, the vineyard she and her husband had purchased a couple years back, nursing that back to health, and last fall was able to harvest her first batch of, of fresh local grapes and produce some, some uh, <coughs> organic grape juice. So a little less than 300 bottles she made last year. All of those sold out fairly quickly. And um, as she grows, she'll be able to produce more and um, more of her product and do so more efficiently. So she's going to use her prize package um, to acquire a destemmer, a couple um, new juicers, a grape shoot, and um, like three dozen new plants to really um, not only produce more uh, product, but really grow her overall operations and um, sell her items through local retail stores and online. And her target markets, um, those individuals looking for locally produced goods. So again, that's residents and you know, that, that tourism arm of our economy, looking for those local goods, um, those organizing events, and anybody looking for like unique gift ideas. So again, really excited about her business. Um, second place went to Nellie Gomez and her new full service laundry business. So Dino Clean will provide pickup, cleaning, and delivery to local restaurants, um, commercial businesses, and even certain parts of the energy industry that have regular laundry needs. Um, so you kind of picture a restaurant that has aprons, washcloths, mops, um, things like that that need regular commercial use. And these kinds of services uh, exist and are successful on the Wasatch Front, but um, with that pickup and delivery option that she's gonna offer, uh, Dino Clean will provide something new to you in a county, which is, which is exciting. And uh, Ms. Gomez will use her prize money uh, just to purchase the equipment that she needs to, to serve these local businesses. And then for first place, our winner was Shay Densley. Um, her and her husband um, are venturing in a new business called Hope's Haven, which is equine assisted therapy. So uh, again, this is a service that is not currently offered in the Vernal area with its closest um, service being out in Utah County. 
And the Densleys have, they do have experience working with and training horses here in Uinta County. Shea in particular has worked at these other facilities in other parts of the state, offering individuals with mental health um, needs, different treatments and relief using horses in the process. So um, kind of a, a unique niche market, but something that is out there and there's a demand for. She's earned her degree in kind of an equine focused agricultural science and has certifications to facilitate these equine therapy sessions. So with their funding, they will use the, the money to further her certification in therapeutic writing, as well as make improvements to their property to really be able to offer these services at their um, existing facilities. So like our other winners, this is just another example of someone who noticed a need in the community and is taking the steps to really fill that need and provide that service. So just quick recap, um, because I skipped through so much of that, first place winners um, received $12,000, second place 7,000, and third place 4,000, in addition to the, the donations from the other sponsors and local businesses. Um, both Evans Family Media and V6 Media have donated those top three winners with advertising credits through their online platforms, through the, theater, the movie theaters, and um, like V6 through um, like Strata TV. So they'll have those, those advertising credits to, to help further the, you know, their reach, uh, make sure they're advertising to the public. Um, UB Tech is offering all three winners a full ride scholarship to any one of their programs, which is a great resource and all three are planning on taking advantage of that. Um, again, the, the Chamber of Commerce sponsored our, our People's Choice Award and Strata Networks is offering internet service to each of our winners for up to a year. So um, with that, I believe we had a, another great pitch competition. Um, I think our, our winners showcase a variety of different services and goods. And um, I think they're, they're going to do good not only for residents, but really that tourism side of our economy as well. So um, we'll stay in touch with our winners. We'll make sure they're um, staying on top of what their, their pitch, um, what they've designated that, that funding for in their pitch, make sure they're, um, they're growing and they're, they're, they've got the tools they need. So with that, we'll, if you have any questions for me, if not, we'll just start getting ready for next year. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Very nice. Yeah. The only thing I thought would be good would be, um, we just talked about this a little bit, explaining to the audience a little bit oh, more. Oh, yeah. Of do you how, want me to, I've got no, a slide. You want me to pull this, it up? Not okay. this audience. I mean, when you do the Rise and Thrive and yeah. kind of explaining to the public how you judge and, yeah. and what criteria and what you look at, I think that would help them a lot. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Heidi, 2024 HMEP Grant Award Acceptance. Heidi, Lundberg, Emergency Management. Heidi Lundberg, Emergency Management. Um, this is a the Hazardous Materials Emergency Preparedness Grant through the Utah State Fire Marshal's Office. That is for the Uinta County LEPC, our local emergency planning committee. Um, in the amount of $3,200, and then we will have an $800 match, which is budgeted in my budget already. Okay. And what do we use that for? So we will, it, there's, we will be using it for, it's called a software Aristotec, Peak Software. It does plume modeling for all of the tier two companies in our area. We have one of the highest county we have our county is one of the highest um, for tier two submissions which is hazardous materials on site and so this will help us get all of that data compile it into that software and then we can use that for uh, preparedness and planning for if a bad day happen type of thing okay thank you Okay, do I have a motion to accept the grant? I would make a motion that we accept, I can't remember what it stands for, so I'll just say HMEP grant award in the amount of $3,200. I'll second. Go for a vote. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Zeke. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, Zeke Atwood, purchasing a grants office. Um, I've been working with 
Jess, our facilities matter on this one. We had a, he came to me with a need to do a crack seal and seal coat of parking lots for Unit County. Um, we listed six different areas that we'd be doing. So we have the county building here, the library, the public safety complex, the Children's Justice Center, the Tri-County Health and Maintenance Shop area, and the Conference Center. Um, we put out a request for proposal. We had two respondents on that, which was um, Bonneville Asphalt and Repair and Asphalt Preservation. We did reach out to local vendors and did not receive any bids locally. Um, so those are the two we got. We had an evaluation committee look at those bids and compare them according to the structure that was set forth in the RFP. Um, Bonneville Asphalt did win the technical portion of the points system and then Asphalt Preservation came in with a low bid. Um, asphalt Preservation at the low bid was $123,402.41 and then Bonneville Asphalt and Repair came in at $139,000 $98.43. So Asphalt Preservation won the cost point section. Um, however, the technical points was weighted higher than the cost, and Bonneville Asphalt uh, was the winning bid with 656.77 points. And then Asphalt Preservation came in second with 647.62 points. So it's fairly close. Uh, but the evaluation committee recommends that we award this RFP to Bonneville Asphalt and Repair. Do you know if we've had experience with both of these companies? Um, I don't know. Jess, do you know, have you worked with them before? You have to come up, Jess. Asphalt Preservation, <laughs> he said we have. But not with Bonneville? Okay. I'm just, I'm not questioning the committee. Don't, uh, don't take it that way. I was just, these are very close. And where the price was lower with asphalt preservation, that's why I was just asking. Okay, call for a motion. I will make a motion that we award the crack seal and seal coat of the parking lots bid to Bonneville Asphalt and Repair at a price of $139,098.43. I'll oh, second. Call for a vote. Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right, sir. Thank you. All right, next one is number 17, a backhoe loader rental agreement with Wheeler. We have a backhoe that we pay $14,000 a year for to rent it. It's kept... I believe it's utilized out at Buckskin Hills or Roads Department. I don't remember which one this one is. I think this is the smaller one. But it's a uh, agreement that we've had, rental agreement, and at the end of a couple more years, we'll possibly be able to buy it. So we have to come before to approve it. So do I have a motion? Yeah, we already have the agreement, and John, your office has been able to review that? probably no changes it's just extending it okay then I would make a motion to approve the back load backhoe loader rental agreement for fourteen thousand dollars annually till when just year by year no but I mean it has an expiration date um, un Correct. under the term of us being able to purchase and I don't Scott wasn't able to be here today so I don't remember when that is but each each rental each rental agreement is just annual Oh, because this is rental, not lease. Correct. So we're just... We're just renting. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That's but each one's just year by year. Okay. Yeah, this is a true rental agreement. We can okay. turn it back whenever we want. Thank it's you. It's not a lease purchase at all. Right, that's what I was thinking. So thank you for that clarification. Did I already make a motion? Okay, so I'll second that motion. <laughs> Call for a vote. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, next one is Streetlight Agreement. Mr. Crozier. Okay, uh, Matt Kazir with Community Development. Um, I was asked to be here by uh, Scott since he wasn't able to make it. And I've been involved somewhat with, uh, with this process. Um, this is for the installation of a streetlight. Um, 
So this is for lighting the area, not a traffic light. Um, so it's an agreement with uh, Rocky Mountain Power um, for them to install a street light at 3500 South and Highway 40. Um, it's been in the works for quite a while. I saw some old minutes, but I didn't see a date on, the, on those minutes. Um, I don't remember if Ty remembers the date on those or not, but it was several years ago because it was back when uh, Brian Meyer was at the road department. Um, the commission did approve it, and then I guess they got lost in the shuffle of things um, at the road department. But um, anyway, last year um, I was asked by uh, Scott and Commissioner Horrocks to um, get that revived and get that started moving again uh, so that the, that light could get installed. And so we did that. Um, middle of last year and uh, Rocky Mountain Power finally got us the agreement back uh, back in December and the uh, agreement was signed um, by myself uh, by me um, that was uh, December 7th of 2023 um, the amount for the street light is four thousand seven hundred and ninety one dollars um, and then this I don't, I don't know the they kind of got lost over Rocky Mountain Power after that as well. So they reached back out. Well, I've been reaching out to them because uh, Scott's been asking, hey, have you heard anything on this and what's been going on? And I guess they've had some employee uh, shuffling as well. And so the, the new person that's in charge of, of, of this area got a hold of me again. And so we're starting to trying to get this started again and so we can finish it out. Um, so the request today is uh, the agreement is $4,791. Um, and then the ongoing obligation would be uh, the standard street light agreement that we have already with Rocky Mountain Power. So I think it was 14, um, it says it was 1489 a month. And then Rocky Mountain Power owns it and we just pay that amount if something happens to it or the bulb needs to be replaced, it's all uh, Rocky Mountain Power that does all of that. If someone wrecks into it, knocks it down, do they pay? They replace it, yep. Okay. And this will just be added to our, I mean, uh, Inventory I'm sure Mike knows, I mean, we pay every month for the street lights, and so this will be added to that bill. Um, I'm guess, I, I don't know exactly where the $4,791 is coming from. I'm guessing maybe the road department, but... Um, it wasn't budgeted in my budget to do that. So <laughs> is this the same case. price of four years ago when they lost the paperwork? Um, no, it's actually a little less. Good, uh, we'll take it. It was $5,549 back then that they were looking at. Um, and so it's went down a little bit. Commissioners, all the street lights come out of municipal service fund because it's outside of the county and we have a separate, separate department just for that. So that's where the funds will come from to pay for it. And we have okay. enough in the budget for this? Should have. Okay. Thank you. I do remember this. I think I might have contacted Scott about it. I do, I do know I talked to Rocky Mountain Power about this because I had, I remember an individual from the community that had requested this at that, I guess, intersection. Yeah. Um, because it is very difficult to see when you're driving on the highway. And it also curves as you turn off the highway. So it would be nice to be able to see the road. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if we've had any accidents there. It's been needed there, there for, for a while. So quite a while, yes. Great. That's good to know that we're finally getting it installed. Thank you. So I guess today, maybe John can help uh, if I get this wrong, but I guess today we're looking for approval of that $4,791. And then I guess since I signed it, maybe it's just recognizing that it's been signed, the agreement's been signed by me already. As well, or do you want we can print out a new one and have it re signed as well? Whatever well, I think, if the motion just best. authorizes and uh, that signature that's already been put on there, that would be fine for this because it's okay. all going to fall under the, the general agreement we have with them anyway. We're, we're adding one more, one more light to it. So, if, if it was a whole brand new agreement, I probably would say yes, let's get it, let's get the chair to sign. But under these circumstances, let's just go forward. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Anything else? Okay. okay. Do I have a motion? Yeah. I would make a motion that we approve the street light agreement for the light at 3500 South Highway 40 in the amount of $4,791 and then the ongoing $14.88? 89 cents? Yep. Okay. Per month. I'll second that. I apologize. I was, they've got a request for another one I was looking for it and I can't find the email. But there'll be another one. Uh, I know where it way. is. It's on Fifth North, about 2400 West. They have there has been a request. So I don't know if that's you or do we ask Scott to look into that? Yeah, either one. I mean, I'm happy to help where I can um, on it. Um, I, I just deal with it quite a bit with the subdivisions and things. So I think uh, they came to me to since I was familiar with the process. So okay, good. Uh, but I think if the motion could also include the signature. Oh, uh, on I'm the sorry. As well. I would also add allowing. Or approving Matt Kazir's signature on that. And I'll second that also. And call for a vote. Aye. Aye. Thank you, Matt. All right, thank you. Mr. Dean. Yes, public defender contact for district court. Matt's Dean, uh, managing public defender. Um, we had talked about this in the work session yesterday. Uh, Aaron Owens is an attorney from uh, Provo, Utah. He has accepted and signed a contract uh, using the district court form that we had already approved, that you've already approved as a commission. Um, that's going to begin, back, be backdated April 1st uh, through December 31st of this year, 2024. It'll be for nine months. And then it, as is typical in our contracts with the district court attorneys, uh, there's the option to, if both parties agree, to extend that for two additional one-year terms. And the compensation is $9,166 per month, which is also uh, commensurate with the other three district court attorneys. So we're asking the commissioners to sign the contract. Stop time. Okay, do I have a motion? <laughs> <laughs> I would make a motion that we approve this public defender contract in the amount for district court in the amount of $9,166 a month. I'll second that and call for a vote. Aye. Aye. Okay. 2024 UEN Wi-Fi for Libraries Project Plan. Commissioners, uh, Ryan Matson, UN County IT. Um, this is a project that UEN uh, has basically leftover ARPA funds uh, that they are trying to give out to libraries around the state. Um, so any library was able to apply to it, and I think they had, I think they said somewhere around 29 libraries actually apply to it. Um, <clears throat> so this is uh, UEN 2024 Wi-Fi and Libraries Program. Uh, we applied for it and we received um, what will be a, uh, a uh, they'll reimburse us, there we go, uh, $34,858.15. They wanted it to be pretty pretty exact on everything else like that. Um, and we talked about this yesterday in work session, so uh, pretty much all we need is, is approval of signatures on it. Um, it's already been uh, digitally sent to uh, Commissioner Larson, so uh, any questions on it, uh, anything we didn't cover in yesterday's work session I think I think we pretty much covered it so no I think this will be great to update some of the systems there in the library so yeah you. and uh, like I mentioned yesterday our hope is is that this will keep things nice for about seven years so great and then this was found by the library or Jenny and grants or so originally know? Sam Passy kind of passed it on to me and then UEN UEN got a hold of Sam Passy and then Sam Passy said hey if you want to you know front run this where I'm leaving go ahead and um, and then I just pretty much Crystal and I uh, filled out the application sent it in and, and they said okay perfect so, well thank you not too appreciate much appreciate your work okay call for a motion I would make a motion that we Approve the UEN 2024 UEN Wi-Fi 
for libraries, project plan, budget application, and MOU for $34,858.15. A second. Call for a vote. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Do you know anything about this next one? Um, I, I don't have this one. Is that anybody from Sheriff's Office? Okay. Table that one. We'll table that one until the next meeting. Oh, you have a copy of it, Mike? No. No. Oh. oh. We'll untable this for a minute. If I can see the contract, I think I know what it is. Yeah, and I can take a look. I think, okay. My assistant. I just forgot that. This is a, an agreement with uh, Utah State University to provide uh, mental health mind body training project. This is a grant that. Uh, the sheriff's department received and this extends it to march 31st of 2025 and if i understand this is for all of the people in the sheriff's office to are able to utilize this sure you understand that a little more than i do <laughs> well i asked that question and i believe it was to you i think it is and that's, that's what, what i, I was that's, told that's yes. why i say if i saw the green but i believe it is yes commissioners we mind if we move to the next item. Can I just take a look at it real quick? Just to see, because I... Does it have an amount? I'm just wondering. If, yeah, I just wanted to check. I think it's a continuation of one that we already had. They just extended the time period to use it. So it wouldn't cost us any more just extending the time period? That was my understanding. I believe that's that. correct. It's my understanding also. I okay. I assume the sheriff would be yeah. here to okay. talk about it. Yeah. Okay. We're with it. We're good. Okay. Or I mean, I'm good. I don't know if you're good, but I'm good. <laughs> I'm great. Okay. I'm to sign it. Okay. Okay. No motion. Well, then I will make a motion that we approve the amendment one to the cost reimbursable services agreement between USU and the Sheriff's Office for Mental Health Services through March 31st, 2025. Which authorize Sheriff Labram to sign for it. And authorize Sheriff Labram to sign. I'll second. I'll call for a vote. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Great, and yeah, just, uh, Ty was great. She sent that out last week. I just need to make sure that my mind was thinking that's what I saw and that's what we're talking about. So, yeah. yep, all that had been previously sent out. Okay. Mr. Wilkin. Approval of the State Auditor Risk Fraud Assessment. Commissioners, the State Auditor's Office has what they call the Fraud Risk Assessment we have to do every year. I have completed the check in their boxes. We have a score of 355, which puts us at a very low risk level. The lower number, higher risk level. We have enough internal controls going that that's what we uh, score out on that one. And I have to sign it, and the commissioner chair has to sign it, but it has to be presented in a public meeting now. So, so that's what I'm doing at this point. I have emailed it up to of all of you earlier last week. So it's here for your approval. And 355 out of what? 355, the most you can get is 395. And the lower the better? No, the higher the better. Okay. The lower, the more risk you are. Okay. So we were considered low Very risk? low risk. Very low risk. Okay. Okay, do you have a motion? Um, I would make a motion that we approve the state auditor's risk fraud assessment as presented. I'll second. Call for a vote. Aye. Aye. Okay. And that's basically what it says, right? They've, they've the assessed us and said that our fraud risk is low. We assessed okay. us and said we were low. Thank you. All right, it's time for public comment. Public comment is a time for public comment, not public debate. The county will listen to the comments made and take them into consideration. The county will not be responding to comments or answering questions. Comments made might be something the county has the power 
to act or may not. This is a recorded public meeting. If someone would like to make a comment, they will need to wait until the microphone is available and state their name for the record. Please be respectful, no interrupting, wait your turn. Total of 15 minutes will be allotted for public comment. Each speaker will have three minutes. Do we have anybody available or that would like to have public comment? I see no one. Okay. Do I have a motion? I make a motion we adjourn. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all.